Morning. Comments yesterday, well, I answered most of them yesterday, the ones that came in overnight. There's somebody drunk somebody or other who made three reasonably good comments, but I haven't answered any of them because there was something in each of them that I didn't quite gel with, I didn't quite like, so I couldn't relate to the comment, so didn't answer them. There was another comment, I can't remember who wrote it, because uh, all my memory power has gone into trying to remember what was said. And it went something along the lines of television uh, is only people trying to make a living. That's the first part. If it was um, grammatically as though it was going to flow into the second part, but that's a completely separate part. And it's an interesting point. But it also points to the way things are in the world. We can say, I'll, I'll jump. I'll, I'll jump to the radical one. There's the donkey saying good morning to us. Does seems to do it every time. It isn't a very no, loud, no, noisy don, donkey. It just seems to speak at this time every day. Um, Hitler's troops or yeah troops whatever they were working in the uh, concentration camps were just making a living and I've used that example for a reason which I hopefully will come back to later in the video um, a more non aggressive non something example would be Walmart or uh, any supermarket over the last 40 years most all of the employees are just making a living but the supermarkets have um, I won't, I, I'm struggling I didn't want to say ruined but I'll say ruin because nothing else comes. Have ruined the city centres or the town centres or the villages um, because the local shops, the small shops, the, the mom and pop they call it in America, the retailer type things have come under so much strain from the big supermarkets. That is to say at this level television might be made up of people just making a living, just working for a buck, but it doesn't um, get round the possible fact that the output of all their work is um, bad. Right, the, the comment, the next part of the comment that it's meant to flow into went something along the lines of the, the line was basically to tell me the word I was missing from the catcher in the rye yesterday that Holden Caulfield used so often was phony. And the commenter's line was something like there's nothing worse than an adult I, I wish I'd written it down now. Straining. Let's just say straining because it, it, it works just as well. But I would like to get what he d actually said. S trying too hard. That's it. Of course, trying too hard is phony. Now, I felt a bit phony yesterday, as I said in the video, because it wasn't flowing and I had to kind of pump it. And that's what I would call trying too hard. Or you could say that um, me putting myself down by, I said a few things derogatory about myself slightly, and that could be called trying too hard, and I would have, I'd, I'd agree with that as well. But this part of the comment also made me think about what a 
Holden Caulfield would be thinking was phony and what we might think is phony. Because you can say that, to give you a, the way that I thought about this, the comment said that an adult trying too hard is can be terribly phony. But I think a better way of looking at it, the, the way I looked at it anyway, that, that got me deeper into it was a youngster or a child, let's say, trying too hard is phony. I think that's more phony than an adult. We almost expect it for an adult, but we don't kind of expect it from um, a child. And I think Holden Caulfield in his book is, the basic thing is he's sexually frustrated and sexually confused and most everything else is phony compared to those base emotions that he's shot full of and I think this brings us to what phony probably is because it's only a label but um, it's a label that we you know um, we, we tentatively um, must agree on that being not phony is being true to your animalistic nature to a greater extent. Um, showing your real feelings or base emotions, letting them come to the surface, covering them up in ways that you've been taught, let's say, is the phony part. I think the way I would put this would be that being, let's say, let's go back to another um, youth term, or at least it used to be, was being real. Be real, man. Being real is more going with your genetic inputs where being phony is going with your social inputs right and I'll just go back to the beginning again and I don't know how I'm going to put this in so I'll just say it in, in, in a basic way who is pushing, pushing, who is promulgating, no, promulgating would be the workers, who's pushing the way a supermarket came into town? It's, it's what we now call the 1%. The rest of the workforce do as they're told for wages like Hitler's troops did as they were told, not so much for wages, but for... because they had to. It was the 1% of Hitler's mob that came up with the kooky schemes, and it's the 1% of supermarket people that come up with the direction of surrounding towns and killing the main street. And we ask ourselves if we like, in a conspiracy theory way, who is it that comes up with the direction of television? It's not the people that are working in television just making a living. It's some other people. So I'll leave it there. For my, for me, the more important part of this video is that being real it's a label it's just a label but being real is going with your genetic code coding and being phony is going with your social coding
Bye.